The Athens Polytechnic Uprising occurred in November 1973 as a massive demonstration of popular rejection of the Greek military junta of 1967–1974. The uprising began on November 14, 1973, escalated to an open anti-junta revolt, and ended in bloodshed in the early morning of November 17 after a series of events starting with a tank crashing through the gates of the Polytechnic. Topic. Causes Since April 21, 1967, Greece had been under the dictatorial rule of the military, a regime which abolished civil rights, dissolved political parties and exiled, imprisoned and tortured politicians and citizens based on their political beliefs. 1973 found the military junta leader Georgios Papadopoulos having undertaken a liberalization process of the regime, which included the release of political prisoners and the partial lifting of censorship, as well as promises of a new constitution and new elections for a return to civilian rule. Opposition elements including socialists were thus given the opportunity to undertake political action against the junta. United States took a clandestine interest in suppressing socialists and had a CIA operative named John Morey who was in consultation supporting the junta leaders. American Vice President Spiro Agnew praised the junta as the best thing to happen to Greece since Pericles ruled in ancient Athens. The junta, trying to control every aspect of politics, had interfered with student syndicalism since 1967, by banning student elections in universities, forcibly drafting students and imposing non-elected student union leaders in the National Students' Union, EFEE. These actions eventually created anti-junta sentiments among students, such as geology student Kostas Georgiakis who committed suicide in 1970 in Genoa, Italy as an act of protest against the junta. With that exception, the first massive public action against the junta came from students on February 21, 1973. On February 21, 1973, law students went on strike and barricaded themselves inside the buildings of the Law School of the University of Athens in the center of Athens, demanding repeal of the law that imposed forcible drafting of subversive youths, as 88 of their peers had been forcibly drafted. The police were ordered to intervene and many students were reportedly subjected to police brutality. The events at the law school are often cited as the prelude to the Polytechnic Uprising. The student uprising was also heavily influenced by the youth movements of the 1960s, notably the events of May 1968 in France. Topic: The events. On November 14, 1973 students at the Athens Polytechnic Polytechnion, went on strike and started protesting against the military regime, regime of the colonels. As the authorities stood by, the students, calling themselves the Free Besieged, Greek, Eleutheroi Poliorchemenoi a reference to a poem by Greek national poet Dionysios Salamos inspired by the Ottoman siege of Messalonghi, barricaded themselves in and constructed a radio station using laboratory equipment that repeatedly broadcast across Athens, Polytechnion here. People of Greece, the Polytechnion is the flag bearer of our struggle and your struggle, our common struggle against the dictatorship and for democracy. Maria Damanaki, later a politician, was one of the major speakers. Soon thousands of workers and youngsters joined them protesting inside and outside of the Athens Polytechnic. In the early hours of November 17, 1973, the transitional government sent a tank crashing through the gates of the Athens Polytechnic. Soon after that, Spiros Markazinis himself had the humiliating task to request Papadopoulos to reimpose martial law. Prior to the crackdown, the city lights had been shut down, and the area was only lit by the campus lights, powered by the university generators. An AMX-30 tank, still kept in a small armored unit museum in a military camp in Evlonas, not open to the public, crashed the rail gate of the Athens Polytechnic at around 3 a.m. In unclear footage clandestinely filmed by a Dutch journalist, the tank is shown bringing down the main steel entrance to the campus to which people were clinging. Documentary evidence also survives, in recordings of the 
Athens Polytechnic radio transmissions from the occupied premises. In these a young man's voice is heard desperately asking the soldiers whom he calls brothers in arms surrounding the building complex to disobey the military orders and not to fight brothers protesting. The voice carries on to an emotional outbreak, reciting the lyrics of the Greek national anthem, until the tank enters the yard, at which time transmission ceases. An official investigation undertaken after the fall of the junta declared that no students of Athens Polytechnic were killed during the incident. Total recorded casualties amount to 24 civilians killed outside Athens Polytechnic campus. These include 19-year-old Michael Mirojanis, reportedly shot to death by Officer G. Dertilis, high school students Diomedes Komnenos and Alexandros Spartidis of Lycée Leonin, and a 5-year-old boy caught in the crossfire in the suburb of Zografu. The records of the trials held following the collapse of the junta document the circumstances of the deaths of many civilians during the uprising, and although the number of dead has not been contested by historical research, it remains a subject of political controversy. In addition, hundreds of civilians were left injured during the events. Ioannidis' involvement in inciting unit commanders of the security forces to commit criminal acts during the Athens Polytechnic uprising was noted in the indictment presented to the court by the prosecutor during the Greek junta trials and in his subsequent conviction in the Polytechnion trial where he was found to have been morally responsible for the events. Topic. Aftermath of the uprising On November 14, the uprising triggered a series of events that put an abrupt end to the regime's attempted liberalization process under Spiros Markazini's Papadopoulos, during his liberalization process and even during the dictatorship, attempted to re-engineer the Greek political landscape and failed repeatedly. In his biographical notes published as a booklet by supporters in 1980 it is mentioned that he attended Polytechnion, the prime engineering school in the country, but did not graduate. Brigadier Dimitrios Ioannidis, a disgruntled junta hardliner, used the uprising as a pretext to re-establish public order, and staged a counter-coup that overthrew George Papadopoulos and Spiros Markazinis on November 25 the same year. Military law was reinstated, and the new junta appointed General Faden Gazikis as president, and economist Adamantios Androutsopoulos as prime minister, although Ioannidis remained the behind-the-scenes strongman. Ioannidis' abortive coup attempt on July 15, 1974 against Archbishop Makarios III, then president of Cyprus, was met by an invasion of Cyprus by Turkey. These events caused the military regime to implode and ushered in the era of Metapolitefsi, Greek for polity, regime change. Constantine Karamanlis was invited from self-exile in France, and was appointed Prime Minister of Greece alongside President Faden Gazikis. Parliamentary democracy was thus restored, and the Greek legislative elections of 1974 were the first free elections held in a decade. The 17th of November, the date of the event, later became the name of a Greek terrorist group, in reference to the uprising. Topic. Legacy November 17 is currently observed as a holiday in Greece for all educational establishments, commemorative services are held and students attend school only for these, while some schools and all universities stay closed during the day. The central location for the commemoration is the campus of the Polytechnio. The campus is closed on the 15th, the day the students first occupied the campus on 1973. Students and politicians lay wreaths on a monument within the Polytechnio on which the names of Polytechnio students killed during the Greek resistance in the 1940s are inscribed. The commemoration day ends traditionally with a demonstration that begins from the campus of the Polytechnio and ends at the United States Embassy. The day is always a day of social unrest where mass riots occur during the entire night. One. The student uprising is hailed by many as a valiant act of resistance against the military dictatorship, and therefore as a symbol of resistance to tyranny. Others believe that the uprising was used as a pretext by Brigadier Dimitrios Ioannidis to put an abrupt end to the process of ostensible liberalization of the regime undertaken by Spiros Markazinis. Topic. 
Topic: Citations and notes. Topic: See also. History of modern Greece. Greek military junta of 1967–1974 Metapolitefsi External links The Boy Who Braved the Tanks Athens by Night